automatically restarted it, so I can't feel her. Hi, come on. <laughs> really nice to see you. <laughs> Uh oh. I had to be patient. They update the window somehow. There's some package. Yeah, there's some window update. And uh, so there's a first stage of uh, the first of a three stage. And uh, now the first stage is 30%. <laughs> I don't know how much. <laughs> and so it's so tell me do not turn off the computer. <laughs> it's up. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, all right, good discussion. <laughs> second cycle of updating. <laughs> so turning off is one, and uh, turning on is another. It seems going OK. Oh, just 35%? Yeah, it's OK. <laughs> it's, it's going, yeah, it's, uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, it, it could be, if, if the update many, it's, it could take a long time. <laughs> We have to wait for the, it's rebooting.
went from MIT, and he's going to tell us about the Portugal order and algebraic topology. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's really my great pleasure uh, to come here uh, to discuss uh, to uh, mathematicians and uh, some physicists about uh, uh, some uh, recent progress uh, uh, in condensed matter physics about uh, uh, trying to classify uh, the phased matter under some relation, uh, maybe very deep relation, uh, to some modern uh, mathematics. Mainly, mainly algebraic uh, topology and category theory and etc. So, uh, so the issue we try to uh, discuss here actually is how to classify different phase of a matter. You know, the uh, there are phase of matter like a liquid, a solid, a plasma. You know, uh, but here is uh, something. We, you know, the liquid gas and it's not quite correct. Uh, actually, a uh, more sophisticate, sophisticated classification phase of a matter is based on this uh, Landau's uh, symmetry breaking theory and uh, uh, using group theory. Basically, uh, Landau theory says that uh, uh, different phase of matter are different because they have different symmetry. And uh, so this is basically symmetry breaking. And using group theory, so for a long time we thought we have a complete classification of phase of matter. Just using different symmetry, study the symmetry, we get everything. But it turns out that's not correct. Actually, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, matter, uh, phase of matter, which is beyond the Landau's uh, symmetry uh, theory. It's not classified group theory. It's not classified symmetry. It's classified something else. It's contained new kind of order we call topology order or SPT order. So therefore, it's a, so we have to revisit, revisit the problem. You know, uh, if, if a group theory is not enough, symmetry is not enough, then what should you use? What kind of mathematics should you use to classify different phase of matter? Huh? Symmetry protect topological order or symmetry protect trivial order, depending on your opinion. <laughs> the both of T, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, so certainly because uh, uh, the audience is uh, many mathematicians, so therefore uh, I, have to, I need to explain what is a quantum system, what is a short correlation, what is a gapped quantum liquid? So because uh, this, uh, uh, so the topic of today is really, really, really try to classify this kind of thing. And uh, so here I just give a, a kind of a abstract uh, mathematical definition of, or so-called quantum system. You know, basically a quantum system is defined by, uh, in this talk, actually defined by a set of tensors. That's it. So a set of tensors is a quantum system. OK, and but how, how that sort of works, we have a space-time. We kind of triangulate the space-time, OK? Uh, we have a triangulation of space-time. Then we put some index, like a, a V, the vertex in the VI on the vertex of the triangulation. And we put some other index, like EIJ, on the edge. So this IJ means this edge or that I edge. We put the E on the edge of a triangulation. And uh, we can also put something like a phi, one, two, three, on the face of a triangulation, et cetera. So therefore, on every uh, simplex, we attach an uh, index to it. OK. Then, then for every, uh, like tetrahedra, then we have a four uh, vertex. So we have four index from vertex. And the four face, we have four index from face on the six edge. So six index from edge. So there's a total 10 index. So there's a rank of 10 tensor uh, associated for each uh, tetrahedron. So this is a data. So this is a tensor. And certainly, uh, so this is a tensor C. So this is a, so a 10 index here. It's very ugly. But then for each edge, you can see we can have a, a two index, a two index uh, from, from vertex and one index from the, uh, from the edge. So the total three index associate with a single edge. And then, then on this edge, we can put a tensor like a E, which have this uh, edge index and a two vertex index. And then certainly on each vertex, we can put a, 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 a vector, which only depends on one index on the vertex. So, so basically, if you do this, the, you, if you assign this uh, tensor to the, in this way, you basically, in, you know, quote unquote, define a quantum system. And there are some, some complexities that uh, uh, this, uh, this index 
Uh, those tensor may depend on some uh, geometric information, say like uh, uh, the size of each edge and angle, and cetera. So I using DIJ just try to represent there's some geometric in information may, may, may also include it. So the, 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 this tensor may depend on that. Okay. So once you have this uh, set of uh, tensor, from physics point of view, actually this set of tensor is really defined the Lagrangian. So this is pretty uh, a discrete version to say they are Lagrangian. And, uh, but once you have this set of tensor, you can define the partition function. And uh, the partition function, uh, the so-called partition function based on number. So that's for every closed manifold, once you have this tensor, you can get a number. So this association from manifold to number is called a partition function, and that defines a physical theory. So the, the way to assign the number partition function is following. Uh, you know, the space-time is many, many uh, uh, tetrahedrons, okay? And uh, then uh, for, for a common face, this triangle is uh, shared by two tetrahedra. Then the index on this triangle is the same. It's just uh, this uh, phi, one, two, three, for example. And then for, so, so therefore we, so therefore for the common face, we have a, we have a same, we have a same index uh, for, for the, for the different attached tetrahedra. And then we sum over all these, uh, uh, those uh, the index uh, on the face on the edge, you know, for all these uh, shared face, we just sum all, sum all, all, sum them up. So they just sum over all this. And then certainly we can, but for the tensor we obtain before, we just uh, multiply all these tensor uh, together and uh, identify those index and uh, sum all the, all uh, sum over all the common index. And this is just a way to give you a number. Okay. And this number is, uh, it's called the partition function. So what is important here is that it's not just a, for every manifold you give you a number. This number is produced locally. Basically, this number is produced by local information. So basically, those tensor are locally defined. Then by multiplication and summation, we, there's a local way to assign this uh, number. So this is uh, important. Uh, maybe symmetric concept is also fine. And uh, uh, so this detail, I'm not so clear. And uh, um, yeah, actually, symmetric concept, con uh, s s this is symmetric set of symmetric complex is maybe more natural, uh, maybe easier to describe certain things, but we haven't really think about that. Yeah. And, uh, and certainly, so this is a partition function. And but however, you can have a correlation. Uh, correlation, what is correlation? Correlation from mathematic point of view simply is that uh, you can see in the partition function we have uh, many, many tensors associated with, uh, with uh, each cells, simplex. We can modify a few tensors arbitrarily on this simplex, maybe on that simplex. We just modify two tensors arbitrarily. Then after modification, we can compute another number, just again sum over everything. Then the ratio of the new number divided by the old number is what we call correlation function. And basically, in physics, that's it. And the correlation function is something you can measure by neutron scattering, X-ray scattering, some experiments, you know. So, so physics basically is, is a rule that's a, from the set of tensor which, which is defined a physical system. Then you can compute the correlation function which you can measure by experiments. And so then that you can get a theory and experiment and comparison and et cetera. So, that, that is a, so that's basically the a, a, a physics setup but from very mathematical uh, point of view. However, there is a, a little bit of shuttle here. Is that uh, because a tensor, you can see like this tensor, it have the index, the index of order. You know, this is zero, one, two, three. Index of order. And uh, if you're using purely geometrical picture, it's hard to order index. So we have to find a way to order all the index. So this is uh, where this uh, uh, another, another structure comes in. That is uh, the, the so-called branching structure. So it's not only just a, a simply a triangulation, it's a triangulation with a branching structure. So that's what this arrow means. So the branching structure basically is that uh, on every triangle, the arrow are frustrated. We don't have arrow kind of circulating in one direction. Always a two arrow in one direction and the third arrow in the opposite direction. So, so we assign, we have this some kind of this assignment of arrow. Once you have this uh, arrow assignment, then you'll find that all the vertex are ordered. 
because you have a, a vertex zero means have a zero incoming edge. You have vertex one which have a one incoming edge. Vertex two have a two incoming edge, and vertex three have a three incoming edge. So all the vertex are naturally ordered once you assign this, uh, uh, this kind of branching structure. So then, so when the vertex is ordered, then, then certainly we can naturally use this order to order the vertex index in the tensor, you know. So, and similarly, we can do similar ordering for the edge index or the face index. So, so, so we're using this. So, so therefore, we, we, we reduce the symmetry. We don't have a tetrahedral symmetry. The tetrahedron, we don't have a symmetry. But uh, after this branching structure, there's no symmetry. So we reduce all the symmetry. And uh, so, so therefore, so this, uh, this branching structure turns out to be important. So once we have a branching structure, we have a tensor assignment, then we basically define the physical system. So this is basically the uh, definition of a physical system, just a set of a tensor and the triangulation of space-time with a branching structure. OK, so any question? Yeah. Yeah, this is a path integral point of view. So I try to avoid Hilbert space. So, so then in kinetic matter, we talk about Hilbert all the time. But the, this time, I, I try to avoid mentioning Hilbert space at all. So no vector space, no linear algebra. Just, uh, just this uh, path integral. So I'm, what, what, what I'm describing is uh, some discretized version of a path integral. Yeah. So then after this definition, now we can define uh, 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 so-called shouldering correlated uh, system. Or in the Hilbert space language, it's a so-called gapped quantum system. So shouldering correlated system, they have uh, two concepts involving here. First, there's a notion of an infinite size limit. So that is a, uh, so even the size limit is falling. We, we have a space-time manifold. We do a finer and finer triangulation. But however, we keep a size of a simplex uh, order one. So each system is always size order one. So when you have a finer, finer triangulation, that means the volume of a triangle uh, manifold should grow and grow. So the system getting bigger and bigger. So we have this. Uh, a larger size, uh, uh, infinite size limit. And in this infinite size limit, we can define this so-called correlation function. If the correlation function for any multiplication of a tensor always have this exponential decay, we assume, you know, if you choose some tensor, then this one may have algebraic decay. Then we say it's not shortening correlated. But for certain choice of a tensor, uh, this correlation function always have exponential decay, and this for this choice of a tensor, we say we have a shouldering correlated system. And in this talk, I mainly concentrate on the shouldering correlated system, which are, are simpler. It's more related to the algebraic topology. OK. So, uh, but however, once we take this uh, somewhat dynamic limit, it means that I take the uh, take a limit where, where the triangulation getting finer and finer, we get the more and more triangles. And there's a big problem, is that uh, how you relate the system with different size. You know, when the, when the system have different size, they could be totally different. So they, sh they should be related in a certain way. So we can take uh, this thermodynamic limit uh, in a more reasonable way. OK, here the idea is that uh, uh, we can add some kind of uh, uh, frozen degree freedom. And uh, to to uh, to make a triangulation finer, and uh, then unfreeze those uh, freedom to get a bigger size. So here, actually, here is an idea. Suppose we have a in one side we have a triangle, single triangle, and we don't have a three index on the edge. So this uh, this e uh, three index on the edge. Then we can just uh, make this single triangle into three triangle. Okay, but then you have a new index on this three edge. So, so then these two, these two are really very different. It's hard to compare them. But the here, what we, what we do is following. Initially, we say the index on this edge always equal to one. They don't change. So this edge does do nothing. They, they don't provide any new degree freedom. So it's just freeze to be one. Then also say that the index on these two edge are frozen to be equal. They're always equal. <laughs> and on these two edge, always equal. So therefore, at least in this limit, then these two triangles are pretty much similar. So they're basically the same thing. 
And uh, so then that's, that's a stage from here to here. So there are some frozen degree freedom. But then after I, then after I have this other frozen degree freedom, then I can unfreeze it in a sense. Now I modify this tensor so that this tensor can be non-zero when this uh, index equal to two or three. So I can modify this tensor. Then, then slowly I can modify this uh, system with a frozen degree free freedom to a system with a more degree freedom, which are, they are no longer freeze. And we hope during all this process, this short range correlation structure is maintained. Okay. So this way, we find a way that uh, we can systematically have a finer and a finer translation, and then the, the system may remain to be short ranged. The, and the smoothly connected all the time. Yes? So I, I suppose in this uh, feature size practical description, the underlying quantum system may not be unique. Is that important? Very important. So, the, so actually, so this is a, this is a, a condition. Uh, so actually, I don't know how to prove unitarity, but uh, this is a sufficient condition. OK, so that's another, another feature is that uh, you can see there's a top, there's a, there's a one simplex have same dimension space time. And the tensor associated with uh, this top simplex is a complex. And we have a two versions of that, the plus one and the minus one. I will come back to this. But there are also tensor associated with a lower dimensional simplex, like on the edge and the vertex. I assume those tensors are always positive definite. This is a sufficient condition for unitarity. This may not be necessary. And certainly we hope to have a sufficient necessary. But if you choose this tensor, you can guarantee this unitary system. And this is very important, actually. It's, a, it's guaranteed to admit the Hamiltonian description with a Hermitian operator as Hamilton Hamiltonian. So that's reflective positivity. Exactly, this is positivity. But I don't know why this. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this. It's a, whether it's a necessary sufficient or just sufficient. Yeah, this is really like reflection positivity. Yeah. And this plus or minus space is falling. Once you have branching structure, you find that the top simplex have a two, two orientations, like what, what, what I described here. The, the, the mirror reflection chart, and these two the kind of mirror reflection chart have two orientations. So we, are, we have freedom to assign one tensor to one orientation, another tensor to the to the opposite orientation. But here, I say these two times are related to the, by the complex conjugate. So, so this is a sufficient condition for unitarity. OK. Yeah. So, so what we achieved so far is that uh, we define the physical system. And we define what you, what you mean by shortly correlated the physical system, which basically is taking limit of uh, infinite size. And uh, then we can define the so-called uh, the phase, that's a, the equivalent class of a physical system. That means uh, the, the phase actually is pretty simple. It's as a, when you have a two physical system, which you, you can take, so on, take an infinite limit, if they can continuously deform into each other without destroying the short range correlation property, you know, the smoothly deform means so you can change the tensor from one to another system. But however, during the whole deformation, the short range correlation probably always maintained. You, know, you don't destroy that. This exponential decay always maintained. Then we say that these two systems are equivalent. So therefore, the topic of today's talk basically is, uh, is try to classify this equivalent class of this, uh, uh, of this kind of uh, uh, physical system. And, uh, and this equivalent class actually is, uh, is, uh, is basically the definition of a topological order. You know that is a, uh, so. This is a, this. This is what, what what you try to do, and uh, so uh, so why this is this thing relate to the mathematics or algebraic topology? So one claim is that uh, uh, if you do this kind of thing, you automatically get topology invariance for manifold. Okay, so uh, so it's really this uh, uh, this picture is that. Uh, so remember, uh, we are given a set of tensor, given a triangulation manifold, you get this, uh, you get a so-called partition function. Okay. 
However, if you take a limit of a finer and a finer uh, 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 triangulation, then the partition function would, uh, would approach into this form. And uh, there is a form depend on the volume of a manifold. Remember, each, each cell, each triangulation have a unit size. So, so this volume basically how many, how many tetrahedra are there? Just a model, it's counting number of tetrahedra. And so there's a term like this. So basically that each tetrahedra have the contribution, then there's a, you have many, many tetrahedra, so they have this factor just multiplied together. So this epsilon is a, in, in physics called a density, uh, the Guangxi energy density. Okay. So there is a term which depends on volume. Okay. Then, then we, we, so this, this part is now rigorous, but uh, then we, we try to imagine that uh, you can define this volume properly. You know, this is a part of which you, we have some trouble to really rigorous do that. And for some special case, we can do that. But suppose we can really define the volume and really put, write this form. Then the ratio of a partition function divided by this volume term give us something independent of volume. There's some volume independent term. It turns out that the partition function for this short range correlated system this volume independent part of a partition function is automatically a topological invariance of the manifold. And the reason is that the short range correlation, because the, because the system have only short range correlation, you can see that this system do not see anything global, only see something local. So if you only see something local, you, you tend to say, maybe you only have this volume term. This will be always equal to one, but actually, you know, we have examples, and the mathematician find also many examples. It turns out that uh, if you do this, uh, even for shortening correlation, we, even with shortening correlation, this partition function, this ratio of partition function after removing the volume term, only depend on topology of space time, and uh, and uh, so so it became a topology invariance, which which mathematician studied, you know, a long time ago, and also very extensively the topology environments which people can use to classify the manifold. But in physics, somehow this uh, partition function for short range correlated system automatically produce uh, this, uh, this uh, topology environments. Uh, uh, in, in a first question, why is it that the partition function only depends uh, on the volume as opposed to say, the shape of the manifold? Uh, the, the thing is that uh, uh, this is a short range correlation. If, the, if you have algebraic correlation, then the shape may enter. Because it have only short range correlation, it can only see its neighborhood, and uh, and uh, somehow this uh, if you def you can you can define you can define volume properly. So this uh, so so there's a this local data is kind of just a volume. It's it just add it just add together. Yeah. So actually, for translation, one system is much better. Deal. So so this is the part. If you have translation symmetry, you can really you can really see this feature. But uh, how to generalize, uh, how to define volume when you don't have a translation symmetry, when you have arbitrary triangulation, we have some difficulty. But this 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 really this this actually a pretty deep question. This is actually is it's about uh, when you have a triangulation of uh, the manifold, but you only have discrete data, and only look at the discrete data locally. What kind of geometrical information would eventually emerge in the continuum limit? Uh, so it's become this kind of question. And uh, yeah. 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 It's, it's some effective metric at the end. What I saw? A oh, short correlation? The thing is that's uh, the... No, sometimes when you, when you try to deform uh, two tensor into each other, you find that in the process, you have to go through a certain tensor which have uh, this uh, long range correlation, have algebraic long range correlation. And uh, then the, the global, then this long range correlation would uh, this, uh, the shape and uh, the more complex structure of a manifold may enter into the game? So 
Yeah, uh, eventually, but here, uh, not, not, not here right now. But maybe, maybe, maybe let me just give the one example uh, uh, for the for physics. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the ter actual terrorial environments for three manifold is exactly what we described. Yeah, and uh, so uh, so so in the in the, in the terrorial construction of a of a topology environment for three manifold, uh, they 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 design certain very special tensor. <laughs> they they have very special tensor. Such that this tensor have a re-triangulation environment. Basically, say here they have two tetrahedra. If you add a, a line here, these two tetra become four a uh, three tetrahedra. Then you can use two tetrahedra to compute the partition function, or you can use a three tetrahedra to compute the partition function, but using the same tensor. But then Terrell will pick a special tensor so that the Computation from two tetrahedra and the computation from three tetrahedra is the same, it's identical. When a tensor satisfies a certain relation called the Pentagon relation, then these two computations is, is identical. So that means uh, uh, for this, for, for physical system of this kind of, uh, described this kind of tensor, it's a RG fixed point, means uh, you can choose a very, very fine triangulation and the compute partition function. But you can also pick a very rough triangulation, and you get the same partition function because uh, the whole computer computation is a triangulation independent. So, so this way, uh, by, by, by looking for tensor which satisfies certain kind of pentagon identity, you basically define uh, a different, uh, you, you define some number that uh, is a triangulation independent partition function. And so this, uh, this partition, uh, this triangulation independent partition function is a, a, is a, is, is really this uh, a topology environment for three manifold. But however, we can also view this tensor as a physical system. They describe some ideal physical system. And uh, in a certain short range correlated phase, and the, the, and the different choice of this tensor really give us different uh, short range correlated phase. It's absolutely crucial. So basically, there's, I need to have it. But there could be the That's right. So, so basically, yeah. So basically, the, this, this is a really, this is a very, very good question. So what we try to do is here is following. You know, since we have this automatic topology environments, we can turn things back. You say, maybe for, for different topology environments, that means we have a different phase of matter, a different physical system. But then there's an the issue that uh, if you have some topology environments which is, uh, you don't know whether it's have a local description or not, then there's an the issue whether this kind of topology environments can be realized, ha can, be ha can have this automatic realization by some local system or not. So then we, we try to say that uh, for the topology environments which have a local realization, we say those topology environments actually describe real physical phase. But there's many other topology environments which don't have a local realization, then we don't know what to say. There's something useful for bandematics, for manifold, but may not be useful to classify physical phase of matter. We don't know that. You're guessing that. We're guessing that. Uh, but but, but, but um, that's almost definition. That is a. There could be some long range interactions between objects. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's totally correct. That is a. So here, again, the quality, here define local physical system. So we kind of not having this long range interaction. So when you have a long range interaction, the classification problem will be totally changed. There's an asset that we know in higher dimensional quantization theory, for example. Yeah. There are systems which are interested in interacting with someone's newspaper, which don't seem to have a local Lagrangian description. Yes. So they have local and potential and all that. They don't have a Lagrangian description. Yeah. But uh, the question, whether they have a tensor description, this triangulation description, that's a, so this is a more, this, this kind of discredits the version of field theory. We know there's a lot of field theory which may not have this tensor description. And then those field theory, even with Lagrangian, there is a concern whether those field theory are really well defined or not. So here I'm using this tensor or triangulation to guarantee that uh, all the system we discussed are finite, finite system, they're all well defined. Basically, they all have UV completion. Yeah. 
So this is a, this kind of a condition. We only discuss system with UV completion. So more like some condensed matter systems also on the lattice. And uh, then we say, what, what kind of possible phase those systems can have? Then, then so this, your question is really very important. So then we need to separate that. Maybe only topological environments with a local origin, they are useful for my purpose, which using classified phase. And there are some topological environments which may not have a local origin. They may not be useful for, for this purpose. So how to separate? All these known topological, you know, my dimension have uh, so many topological environments, but how to, how to make a separation? So those will be very important. Is there an example of the fact that you should not localize it? I think so, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, uh, basically, I think Dan Fried told me you, you can use some Dirac solution with Dirac operator on some manifold. There is zero mode structure to directly define a topological environment for that manifold. And that sounds non local. And if you're using that topological environment, they are, he actually operates in different classification. And because this issue, so I'm not sure whether that collaboration is a work for local system or not. So th those are very, very important questions. So therefore, now this is basically a definition problem. We basically want to classify effective theory with uni UV completion. Well, each effective theory just describe a quantum phase. And uh, we can ignore all the effective theory which don't have UV complete. We say they are not well defined. Well, if it's a theory on some lattice, that's, you don't mean UV completion quantum field, I don't know whether, yeah, so, yeah my, my definition of UV completion really means <laughs> on the lattice, yes. So, so actually, what I describe is that the, the most, in my sense, the most general way for me to describe a UV completion, that's a triangulation of space time of assigning tensor. So I, I feel this is a pretty general UV completion. And we hope this definition would cover all the lattice system. So the UV completion that break Lorentz invariance? Yeah, they break Lorentz invariance, yes. So certainly the Toroville invariance happen to be belong to this type. It's local. Toroville is local. So therefore, all the Toroville invariance actually Indeed, it gave us, uh, uh, give us the, uh, a classification of topological phase. So actually, uh, it's a, right now we believe this kind of conjecture is that uh, this, uh, all these uh, trivial topological environments actually classify, it's a one-to-one -one classification of a two-person topological order. But this only a subset of this. The topology order which the boundary can be gapped. You know, there are some topology order whose boundary has to be gapless due to some gravitational anomaly. And there are some other topology order whose boundary can be fully gapped. And for this uh, boundary gappable topology order, we believe they are all classified by this trivial topology environments. So, so the, you can see this may be a one application of a, a mathematical uh, theory uh, to understand a, 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 a subclass of a, a phase of a, a matter. So. Um, yeah, this is a, um, okay, yeah, well, I, can, I can explain this way. Uh, for the quantum system described by Toroville uh, environments, uh, there is a Hamiltonian version of that. Uh, you can design the Hamiltonian which will reproduce Toroville pass integral. And this Hamiltonian, this ideal Hamiltonian turns out to be the commuting term. All the individual terms are commuting to each other. So, so, the, so all these topological order described by trivial topological invariance can be ground state of commuting Hamiltonian. And then there's a theorem that when you have a commuting Hamiltonian, uh, energy moment tensors are pretty simple. They have shown in correlation. They cannot have a gravitational anomaly. So central charge on the boundary has to be zero and things like that. So, so this, this really led to the conclusion. Those commute, also commuting Hamiltonian, the boundary always is gappable. Yeah, exactly. They cannot. All the twirl wheel are always realizable by commuting Hamiltonian. Huh? What about the non-gapable one? Can you not be formulated by relaxing some condition? Uh, in, in terms of tensor, yes. But the twirl wheel require that a special tensor have this retranglation environments. And this condition is very strong. And uh, once you assume that, then, then 
the, the, the boundary is always scalable. That's a very good question. And uh, 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 certain a, a subset of it is satisfied. But uh, to your view, the, their motivation is that uh, to find whatever tensor set of this condition. So actually, the solution, including non unitary one, I believe, I, I'm sure, there is a non unitary solution. And uh, then, so then we have to really consider a subset of a terrorial environments, which satisfy this. Uh, reflection positivity, then that subset, I think, is maybe correspond to classification of topology. This is a very, very good question, yes. Uh, Terrorial solution is a, is a non-unitary one, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so this is a, wow, <laughs> anyway. So this is a, 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 a situation uh, with a, with a, with a, uh, without symmetry. Actually, you can see, we just studied physical system. We don't, didn't talk about symmetry. So without symmetry, we already have a, a very rich class of a, a physical system, uh, like described by Terrell Wheel, and actually more. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a more topology order. But however, in, in physics, we often study the system with the symmetry. So what is the symmetry in, uh, what is symmetry in, in, in this tensor language? It's very simple. Uh, we have a symmetry operation, which is basically, uh, permute those index. So this uh, G is a group element. They just uh, permute index in a certain way. And uh, so you can even view this index as a group element itself. So this, uh, the G act on the index just a multiply, just a group, group multiplication, you know, whatever. And then you say that uh, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the index are permuted by group action, then we say that uh, these uh, this tensor are invariant under this kind of permutation. And uh, then we say these tensor have a symmetry. Okay, that's it. And uh, then certainly there is an issue about the sheltering uh, correlated liquid with the symmetry, how you classify them. So there is there's this uh, issue, uh, how to classify them. And uh, uh, so maybe let me just skip this part. Uh, so, uh, so in general, we can, we can imagine what's going to happen. Is that if you don't have any symmetry, we have a topology order, so like a Tyrrell wheel you know, these uh, environments describe this uh, topology order, which we don't need to mention symmetry. But when we have symmetry, we, we may have something re even uh, richer. So, uh, uh, so, so we can imagine that uh, certainly we, with the symmetry, we, can, we also have a non-trivial topological order, okay? There should be many, many different phases, okay? So, so topology order with symmetry is so something interesting we should classify. But then there is a simpler situation. That is, uh, suppose we don't have a topology order. If you don't have a topology order, but with a symmetry, it turns out that here it's a little surprising. You really say, if you don't have a topology order, we have a symmetry, but without symmetry breaking, you should have nothing. If no topology order, no symmetry breaking, there should be nothing. But actually, uh, the surprise here, even without topology order, and uh, with the symmetry, but uh, without symmetry breaking, without spontaneous symmetry breaking, we can still have a many different phase. There are many different class. And this, this class we call the symmetry protect trivial phase or symmetry protect topological phase. And it's, it is a trivial phase, should, should be called symmetry protect trivial phase. But however, uh, people have been calling this phase topological phase, you know, uh, a long time before. So, so we just uh, follow the, uh, follow the crowd and call that a symmetry product topological phase. So, but they are basically uh, the, the phase with the symmetry but no topology order. But what do you mean by no topology order? So, uh, so I, I couldn't skip this totally. <laughs> so no topology order means the following. We can choose a very boring tensor. For example, we can choose a tensor where all the index equal to one. We can choose all the index equal to one. There's a, this tensor is non-zero only when all the index equal to one. And otherwise, all the times are equal to zero. So therefore, this, uh, this index cannot fluctuate. And then, if you choose this kind of tensor, certainly you can choose this uh, uh, different weight, like on the vertex, you should weight at W0 on the edge, vertex W1. On the tetrahedra, you have weight W3. Then the partition function is just a single term. There's nothing to sum, because all the index is equal to one, otherwise tensor equal to zero. Then just single term, just multiply those W0, W1, W3, 
ratio power, number for vertex, number for edge, number for number for tetrahedra. And this is what I call the volume term. So this is the volume term. It's kind of more, more specific volume term. And uh, this actually is, is a trivial because uh, you can choose those, all those weights equal to one. Then this partition function have no volume term, but always equal to one for arbitrary space-time uh, 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 topology. So this is the definition of a trivial topology order. It's that uh, if you if can choose a tensor whose partition function always equal to one for arbitrary space-time topology, then it's trivial. And the trivial view is different. And then for different space-time topology, actually the partition function are different, so there's something non-trivial. Okay. And uh, certainly, anything which can deform the, to the trivial one, also trivial, you know. So, so this is a too trivial, but uh, there are some other example, the second example I described here, is that uh, uh, we, the, the, the vertex element uh, given by the group, okay. Then all otherwise, uh, uh, the edge and the, and the face, the index all equal to one, so they do not change. So index only on the, leave on the edge, uh, a vertex. And then the weight can all equal to one. For example, you can choose all these weights equal to one. Then the partition function just a group, order of a group raised to the number of vertex. And this is something different. Look, because vertex have a different group element, so have some degree of freedom. It turns out that uh, this particular tensor can deform into this tensor without destroying the Sheldrini correlation property. So, so these two tensors actually describe the same face, and they actually belong to uh, they all have a trivial topology order. So those are trivial topology order. So, so therefore, so therefore uh, the simplest situation will be that, uh, almost like a second example. You know, second example is that uh, we have a tensor, uh, which is all equal to one, but the vertex is given by group element. And this tensor describes a trivial topology order and have a symmetry, okay. But this is only one example, but actually, for a given symmetry, for a given space-time manifold dimension, actually there's many choice of a tensor. Actually, they belong to different face. So the different choice tensor means that uh, uh, somehow those tensors describe a different face. They cannot be connected to each other. But all these tensors have a property that uh, their partition function always equal to one on any space-time manifold. How do you distinguish different faces? Um, yeah, that's the next, next point. Yeah, this is a very good question. Yeah, do you have a question? Uh, Just deform tensor, change the tensor continuously. It just, the tensor just a real number of complex number, you can change them directly. But however, during the change, you want to maintain that the correlation function always have a, a exponential decay, where this correlation length is bounded uh, for any size of a system. Exactly. So here we try to classify uh, a gapped face or short range massive face. Yeah. So the, the kind of any correlation function, but as long as it's decay, uh, it will be fine. Yeah. Okay. So, so then that's uh, the, the, the next topic. So actually, that should be main topic, but maybe I just uh, maybe briefly summarize this <laughs> for the time's sake. And uh, so this seems an easier question. Basically, we want to classify. Different quantum things with a short correlation. But that have a no topology order because classifying topology is pretty difficult. You know, Toro will only classify a subset of topology order. To classify every topology order is pretty difficult in higher dimension, even. But, uh, but so we want to get a simpler question. We want to classify a system with no topology order. It means uh, the partition function always equal to identity up to the volume term. Okay? But have uh, some symmetry. So now without symmetry, then the system with no topology order is just, uh, just one phase. There's a class entry trivial. But with the symmetry, we have several different phases. So, uh, so what is the classification? And this, this problem is much simpler. And we, have, we can have a systematic uh, answer uh, for, for any dimension. The trivial only a partial answer for two plus one dimension. But here, we can have a system answer, systematic answer for any dimension. Actually, the answer is a group homology, they say. And actually, this turned out to be the partial answer <laughs> at the end. So at least a very big class of those phase uh, can be one-to-one -one classified by this, uh, uh, by this uh, uh, group homology. So basically, we have a symmetry group. 
And then we give space dimension, space time dimension. So D is a space time dimension, and this G is a symmetry group. Giving these two as an input, then just compute this uh, group cohomology uh, thing. And then this element is a group cohomology class. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence with this, uh, with this uh, SPT face. So this, uh, this uh, face of this uh, with a notable order but with a symmetry. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. OK. And uh, how to see this? Actually, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not hard to see this, because uh, one, once I already spent time to describe this tensor setup, once you're using tensor setup, it's, uh, it's uh, pretty simple to, to, to see this. OK. So, so how? how? So, so here, just like, like the, the example I described, I have a no index in the edge and the face. I only have index on the vertex. And the index on the vertex is a group element. So this is my system. OK. Then on each, so this is a, this is a two-dimensional example. So on each triangle, so we have a three, we have a three uh, index. So therefore, on each triangle, I assign a complex function. So this, uh, this new is a complex uh, function of, of rank three tensor, which depends on these three index. OK. And uh, if you want to get something trivial, we just say new equal to one. If they're all equal to one, then we get something trivial. That's an example I discussed before. But uh, here, we want to make this a little bit more non-trivial, almost trivial in the, in the following sense. Because uh, 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 here we choose uh, this, uh, this uh, tensor to be something complex, but uh, only, uh, only U1 face. However, we want to choose in such a way that uh, their, their evaluation on the, on the sphere, you know, simply sphere, is a formed by four triangle, the tetrahedron. And on this sphere, I say their evaluation is equal to one. <laughs> okay, so let me let me repeat this. So to get a trivial case, we can simply say all the new equal to one. If all the new equal to one, then the then then this uh, uh, then this tensor product. On this, uh, on the, on the, on the sphere, on this uh, tetrahedra would equal to one. So we know this is kind of a trivial case, and the group element can change, but their, but their amplitude always equal to one, always equal to one. But now here, what I do is following: I would make this uh, tensor for each triangle non-trivial. There, there are something not equal to one, but however, their amplitude on any closed manifold, uh, like uh, on this uh, closed sphere, equal to 1. So therefore, the partition function is identical as before. Because the partition function basically is a product of those tensors that we sum over those index. But the product of those tensors on the, on the sphere, they are equal uh, uh, compared to the previous case, where this, uh, when the, all the new equal to 1, the trivial case. So this is uh, like almost trivial case. But certainly, there's a, a, there's a minor sign. This minus one really coming from this, uh, this uh, four, tri four triangle on the sphere actually have a, two have a one orientation, two have other orientation. So according to our rule assignment, the, 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 the triangle with different orientation should have a complex conjugate. Because here, we only have a face, U1 face. So complex conjugate became just inverse. So, so therefore, this, uh, this is another way to choose a tensor. We choose a tensor such that the partition function is the same as before, same as a trivial case, where all the times are equal to one. Then you'll say, maybe this is trivial. You know, you get a, you, you get a new system which has same partition function as a trivial case, and this new system should be trivial. It turns out the main thing is not. That although this new system described by this new set of tensor have the same partition function as a previous one, but you cannot deform them, them into each other <laughs> without uh, destroying the Schrodinger correlation property. And why, how I prove that, I have to invent a new topology invariance to show this. So there actually, there are topology invariants you can show. These, are new, these different systems are, are really different. OK. Sorry, what's the original demand new to be a 
I let me see. If new is not a face, then the partition function is this. I, I should take a dagger here. Then the partition function is not equal to one. So therefore, that means uh, for different configuration, I have different weight. So the summation became more complicated. No, no, uh, no. This is not minus one. This is supposed to be complex conjugate. Uh, only when you use a face, I replace complex conjugate by minus one. Uh, using my tensor assignment, uh, the, I should really put it as a star here. I should put a star here. But if a, if a new is not face, then I should put, go back to the star. Then this, uh, then the then the different configuration have a different weight. Summation is complicated. It's it's still okay. You can still do that. Uh, but here, my purpose is that I want to design a system whose partition function, whose behavior, almost like a trivial case where I pick all the new equal to one. But then this almost trivial case actually turns out to be non-trivial. And uh, so this is a trick. But at this stage, or maybe I should uh, uh, kind of start. At this stage, actually, these formulas already, uh, for, for those who are familiar with the group cohomology, actually this formula is actually is a co-cycle condition. So this new is a group co-cycle, and, uh, and this is a, uh, sorry, new is a group co-chain. And uh, the co-chain set of this equation is called the co-cycle. So, so, so then, and uh, then, then there's uh, many, many solutions, like uh, there's, uh, there's a new and a new tilt, which differ by, by some ratio of uh, some other things, which are guaranteed to be a solution. If a new two is solution, new two tilt also guaranteed to be a solution. So then this difference is called the co-boundary. And then we say that the two solutions differ by co-boundary are equivalent. Then quotient of the co-boundary, we still have something left. And this is a group, basically a group cohomology. Yeah. So, so uh, but, but uh, I'm not going to talk about the group homology here, but the, 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 my point here is that uh, uh, by, by designing a, a system, which is almost like a trivial case, we naturally encounter group homology. Yeah, why do you claim that this is partition function one? No, it's a, the, the partition, no, the partition function is the same as a, as a partition function where you take new equal to, uh, new O equal to one. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, yeah, so let, let me, let me say. So actually, uh, this condition for the sphere actually imply triangulation independence. For example, this, uh, this, uh, we, have, we, have, we have this triangulation and this triangulation. It turns out that uh, the product of a two nil um, for this two triangle equal to product of two nil this, for that two triangle. And this condition is the same as uh, this uh, condition on the sphere. So actually, this condition on the sphere already imply this product equal to this product. That means uh, this partition function here and the partition function here is the same. No, I'm asking this question. I, I know, but, uh, but with, this, uh, with this triangulation independence, uh, we can, it's really this one. I don't have proof, but uh, here is the thing. You can see on the sphere, on the sphere, uh, no matter how we triangulate, we all have the same thing, okay. Now, what he, here I try to I try to glue three sphere together with a hole in the middle. So there's a shared because there's patch which are shared. But however, since my tensor is pure face, the shared patch happen to have a opposite orientation relative to this sphere and relative to this sphere. So actually, the contribution of tensor for this sphere and for this sphere happen to have an opposite face, so they cancel. So therefore, this, uh, this uh, face can be, this is equal to one, so it can be removed. So therefore, the partition function for this uh, three touch sphere is equal to the partition function of, uh, of a torus. So at least for the torus, no matter how you triangulate the torus, the partition function also equal to one. So, so therefore, not only for sphere, the partition function equal to one, for torus, also, always equal to, also equal to one, or for any manifold which can be constructed by gluing sphere in this particular way. I don't know how, what, what, what the name for that. By, uh, by touching two sphere, removing the common part. And the, you, you can change the topology this way. And anything related to this way, uh, you can show the partition function always equal to one. Uh, I think uh, I don't have a general proof that for any, 
n dimension manifold is a one. Yeah, but this is very close related to diagraph Witten, uh, but not the same. The diagraph Witten is a gauge theory. So, uh, so the assignment, the mathematics seems you, you're using the uh, group homology. This mathematics, this part mathematics same. But however, the, the choice of tensor are slightly different. That makes theory very different. In diagraph Witten, the index are chosen on the on the edge. And uh, so and uh, there, are, there are also some kind of flat connection condition and etc. So when you do that, actually uh, you actually describe a gauge theory. So there you do have a non-trivial <laughs> topological invariance. But uh, here uh, my index group element on the vertex. And uh, so they, they really correspond to nonlinear single model. They're really nonlinear single model with, without gauge field. So uh, although mathematical structure is very similar, but however, at, at the end result, the topology invariance is, is turned out to be very different. And uh, but the, the, the two but the, the two formulations are related. If you gauge my symmetry here, you will get that graph written, basically. If you gauge this, uh, but here we have global symmetry without ga not gauging it. If you gauge it, you will get that graph written theory. So that's relation. But before you gauge it, it's a trivial state. Yeah. Uh, so the so the phase factor is uh, let me maybe just uh, just uh, maybe let me explain this part. I will finish. And uh, so uh, so maybe I, I can I can skip that part also. And uh, so uh, so here the the, the trouble is that uh, so here we construct a lot of model. You know, we we for every group co cycle I can construct a model. But, uh, but how do you know the different model actually belong to different phase? They may be all in the same phase because by design they are very similar. And uh, so therefore we're hoping to find topological invariance to show they are in different phase. But we cannot use this partition function because they're all equal to one, up to the volume. You know, the, uh, at the most you get some volume term, otherwise equal to one. So the idea here is that uh, because we have a symmetry, we can so-called gauge symmetry or twisted symmetry. So the, to twist the symmetry is better to use, in, it's easier to use a field theory to describe it. I can use a tensor to describe it, but the, you, using field theory is easier. It's that, uh, suppose you have a nonlinear sigma model, that's a field theory, and we have some uh, a Lagrangian, okay. Then I can do this uh, changing variable, just, uh, just, uh, uh, just uh, multiply this uh, group element field by some other group element, okay? And uh, then we can find, then we find that uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, Lagrangian uh, is changed accordingly, and uh, we get this, uh, this actual, you know, I'm sorry, I think I should write this way, this is wrong. We get something, actual term like this, and this A is this uh, 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 so-called uh, gauge potential, okay? And, uh, but however, uh, if, you, if this, uh, so this, uh, this, so this is called the gauging or the do the symmetry twist. If this uh, gauge potential have this form uh, by is a kind of like a exact is uh, is exact is exact one form, then indeed uh, the partition function is now changed. So even with this uh, twist, even with uh, this uh, uh, gauging process, the partition do not change. But uh, however, here we can say that uh, we can generalize this a little bit. We say this A is not exact one form. A maybe is a close to one form. So if A is close to one form, then the, this gauged or this twisted partition function will change. So therefore now we have this, uh, we have this uh, a flat gauge connection on the manifold. So that's make us, give us a more, more way to probe. Not only have a space-time topology, we can put some twisting on the manifold. Now the partition function will depend on the twisting. So, the, so therefore, uh, so we can consider the ratio that uh, the partition function with this twist and without twist, their ratio is purely a phase here. In this particular case, they're, they're purely a phase. And then this phase, it happened to be the, uh, the topology invariance. And uh, actually this topology invariance would, uh, would, uh, would uh, happen to be the diagram witten invariance. Uh, they, are, they, they have this gauge theory and et cetera. 
and uh, and the fact that uh, the the diagram I've written find that uh, the different environment of this gauge environment like this is classified by this group homology, and our construction of a non-nesting model also in terms of group homology. So there's a fitting here. So it looks like uh, every possible uh, group go cycle would give us a different uh, topology environments. So maybe they are. So this is re re reason why we try to say they are different. So, uh, so then, so this, so this relate to the uh, another thing. That's a, so, so that's a, led to the uh, another way to look at this. So, instead of from group cohomology, you can try to using some kind of a well-known uh, topology invariance uh, of 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 this type. Then they may correspond to uh, some uh, SPD phase. Actually, this kind of topology invariance are all so-called chain summon type. If it's, a, if it's a continuous group, they actually change some theory. But for discrete group, for finite group, you can also define. This can also be defined. So there are some kind of a more, more general digraph written environments, basically. And uh, so, so this is a, uh, so this, this way, so this is basically a, a formulation of, the, of this uh, SPD phase. And uh, uh, so, so maybe, maybe let, me, let me just make one remark, I will finish. And uh, so there's a lot of things you can see. <laughs> so the, so the, 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 the point, the remark, uh, uh, point is following. So what I, the picture I described here is that uh, the chain summon term or some kind of a gauge, this, uh, this uh, gauge topology environment, like chain summon term in the bulk, which describe partition function of, of a twist theory. Is a kind of related to SPD states, okay? But when you have a chain summon term in the bulk, we know that the edge theory uh, would uh, be anomalous. You should have anomalous edge theory. So therefore, so therefore, the SPD phase have a chain summon term topology inverse in the bulk. The edge theory must be anomalous. So the edge theory should be highly non-trivial because anomalous theory many times is gapless and uh, and uh, have many other properties. So therefore, the anomalous theory is uh, so. In some sense, SPD states in the bulk classify the anomaly anomaly in one lower dimension. But here, I want to emphasize: here we only discuss a chain sum, gauge chain summon theory. So this anomaly is a pure gauge anomaly. Okay. But for the topological order, we have similar story. For topological order, we have a bulk topology order. The edge also anomalies, but this anomaly is a gravitational anomaly. So in a sense, the topology order in the bulk classify all the uh, gravitational anomaly in one lower dimension on the boundary. Okay. But then if you combine these two pictures, then you know we are missing something. And the missing is a mixed anomaly. So there's a new kind of SPD states. <laughs> the bulk is transformation theory, but transformation theory is not pure gauge. There's some gauge term, there's some gravitational term, some mixed gauge gravity transformation term. And this mixed gravitational term would have a mixed gauge gravity anomaly on the boundary. And this kind of thing re requires symmetry. Without symmetry, you don't have a gauge. So require symmetry. So they, they exist only when you have a symmetry. So these are a new kind of SPT states. And then I just want to say that this new kind of SPT states can be classified. Uh, uh, so let me just uh, using this. Actually, can be classified by maybe using, uh, yeah, by this, by group homology as well. Remember, before we using symmetry, group homology of a symmetry group uh, to classify SPD states. But when you have a gravity, you need to add something. Basically, you need to add a tangent bundle of manifold, which have a SO connection. So somehow this SO transformation kind of mix in. It turns out that uh, if you consider the group homology of a G times SO, you mean SO D, but want to take D go to infinity. Because uh, we always uh, have a, we always imagine there's a, this tend the, the, my degree of freedom uh, actually have a, it's higher dimension, but uh, the first D, D part coupled to space-time connection. But, uh, but my non-nesting model can have much bigger field space. 
So this is very similar to the stability condition in the, say like in K theory, this is important. If SOD is, uh, is not right, but uh, we, we need to add this stability thing. So this is SO infinity, very good point. If you do this, but then if you do this, it's too much because there, there, there's something you couldn't see. You have to caution out something. You have to caution out something. So basically, if you do this group homology, you caution out something, you get the right answer. And what you caution out is because, uh, why you want you to caution out something? Because uh, if you do this, you are considered arbitrary SO uh, bundle on the space time. But however, in our problem, the SO always comes from tangent bundle. So tangent bundle is only a subset of arbitrary SO bundle. So therefore, so there's a difference. So, so the topology invariance, which can be seen by tangent bundle, <laughs> are useful. And there are some other topology invariance, which are SO topology invariance. But those topology invariance cannot be seen by tangent bundle, and those are not important. And unfortunately, there's a mathematical theory which describing this which involving some kind of Wu class and the Steno square, which I learned from mass overflow. And, uh, and somehow one can, one can manage uh, to do this computation. So therefore, uh, after this uh, group homology of G times SO and the quotient of something, then we can get some table for some simple uh, symmetry group. So, so this, is, uh, this, really, uh, uh, this really just uh, describes some more general kind of uh, uh, SPD states. So, so to, to summarize is that uh, the, the symmetry breaking state is a group theory. And SPD phase is a group homology. The topology order is like a trivial wheel. But actually, in higher dimension, it turns out we believe it's a unitary n category theory. And we try to develop this kind of theory, whether there's some unitary n category theory actually is a, is a classified topology order. And the topology order with symmetry, so this is a, this means uh, uh, no topology order with symmetry. And this is a topology without symmetry. But topology with symmetry is like a, maybe this is a topic conjecture we are thinking about. This is some kind of enriched uh, unitary n category theory. There's, you know, there's a, in tensor the category theory, there's a natural thing called enrichment. And this seems enrichment, this kind of idea seems so, uh, in the right direction. So, so uh, but this is completely a guess. So, so, so it looks like, uh, so today I only mainly, mainly just discuss uh, this part. So, uh, so it looks like uh, 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 this, um, this kind of more modern mathematics, this uh, algebraic topology or this algebra and things like that, uh, may have very close connection uh, to the classification problem for quantum phase of matter. Okay, thank you. They all realizable. So, so the, 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 the thing we describe here is that they all realizable. So, so, so for example, there's a just concern that uh, whether those things are realizable or not. Actually, this really motivated from a nonlinear sigma model is really here. So originally we have nonlinear sigma model where G live on the group. But now I say, you know, I come from nonlinear sigma model where G live on this G times SO. And, Oh, that's another question. <laughs> and uh, uh, at the moment, uh, I don't know. So and uh, they are not being, uh, none of them has been realized yet, except this, uh, the fermionic version. So right now, I discussed the bosonic SPD state. The fermionic SPD state is a topology insulator. That's a special case for that. That's, that's been realized. But uh, this uh, bosonic one uh, uh, all have a strong interaction. And uh, we, we have not identified any particular material which realized this. Yeah. It's realizable, but not being realized yet, <laughs> I think. <laughs> uh, all these are zero temperature phase. So it means uh, those systems belong to different phase at a zero temperature, and we cannot smoothly go from one to another at a zero temperature. Then you ask, at the final temperature, whether these two systems can go through, can go between each other smoothly or not? The answer is yes. But however, uh, that depends. For SPD order, I think the answer is always yes. At the final temperature, they all became one phase. But however, 
for topological order of n category theory, uh, the answer sometimes may be no. The reason is that you know that in a higher category theory, the string and the membrane became important, not only particle. When the string and membrane became important, the things associated with the string and the membrane may have stability against finite temperature. However, in 2 plus 1 dimension, only particles are important in the category theory for the 2, two plus 1D. We don't have particles, no string. Particles cannot resist uh, finite temperature. So at the finite temperature, all these phases become one phase. So therefore, for terrain wheel uh, classification, they are zero temperature. At the finite temperature, all these different terrain wheel kind of uh, uh, topological order, they all become the same phase. But however, for some topological in higher dimension, at a finite temperature, uh, in, by class of n category, some of them may survive finite temperature. But again, this part is uh, totally unclear. It's uh, you know, uh, not well studied at all. At all. That's right. So that one certainly does exist in nature. Oh yeah, th that's one. I'm sorry. Yeah, in one dimension, it exists in nature. Yeah, yeah. So that's a so. whole that chain have been fine. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that one. Two dimension have not found yet. But but one dimension there's a more. I think there's a more example than that. Because there's a many many one dimensional spin chain, and uh, some them probably also even realize some other states is possible. Yeah. But whole that phase yes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the 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 the. I think I think something related because Dan, you know, Dan Free told me that uh, he have a s along that direction. No, but uh, he have some other way to construct it. And this topology environment is almost like a, 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 a fourth root of this uh, E eight state. You know, there's a uh, there's a uh, there's a gravitational transform term uh, in three dimension. And that's that's one topological invariance, and uh, you can take. He said to me that you can take a fourth root of that, <laughs> and to get to get something fine, uh, something smaller. And uh, but uh, we know that this uh, this uh, this uh, gravitational term have realization. We call the E8 quantum Hall states, but it's a fourth root. We don't have any kinematic construction, so I'm not sure this fourth root, although mathematically can be defined. But uh, maybe that's already non-local. Yeah, that, that is a that is a concern. Thank you. Yeah.